Good afternoon. This is Nationwide. We are live in Abuja. We are glad you joined us. Welcome. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. We start with an assurance from President Mohamed Buhari who says his administration remains committed to protect the lives and property of all Nigerians and will also put an end to every form of crime in the country. The president stated this at the passing out parade ceremony of the second cadet course of the Nigeria Police Academy with Deal State. The police force remains a critical pillar of our domestic security agenda. It is therefore important to have orderly, disciplined, and modern police officers. The mission of this academy is to produce superior police officers that are equipped with the knowledge and skills to police Nigeria with unique complexities. The academy has endeavored to provide an environment conducive for learning and research into high-level policing and general service to the public. A total of 628 cadets are passing out from the academy as assistant superintendents of police, ASP, and have undergone five years physical training on relevant courses. The passing out parade also featured the presentation of awards to best graduating students by the president. And security experts are brainstorming in Abuja for the next two days in order to take active steps to implement the roadmap provided by the 2019 National Security Strategy to mitigate security challenges. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, says her ministry is one of those saddled with humanitarian challenges resulting from insecurity is resolved to partner stakeholders to make Nigeria safe. Let's now join Lydia Samson for the details. Together by the Nigerian Army Resource Center and the University of Abuja, this session is all about evaluating the country's national security challenges with a view to charting a way forward. Professor Sadiq Abba is with the Department of Political Science, University of Abuja. He's not just a participant, but also one of the resource persons. Uh, political Science Department, we believe that uh, the best security in the whole world, and that is the universal best practice today that has been globally is citizens driven security system uh, we are selling this idea across board minister of humanitarian affairs disaster management and social development sadia umar Fouk, is concerned about mitigating humanitarian challenges it is for understandable that she is vowing to take the lead in coordinating response to the displaced persons We're working uh, together with the military to see that we have a very smooth uh, uh, operation, both security angle as well as the humanitarian uh, angle. For the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukulbete, the seminar is the needed platform to rub minds for better understanding and performance. The outcome, ideas and recommendations will be communicated to the various organizations represented here. He said, in spite of intervention by non-governmental organizations, there is still a gap that must be bridged. This seminar is therefore all about having a buy-in of all to mitigate security challenges in the country. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. To other matters now, the new chairman and chief executive officer of the Federal Inland Revenue Service has assumed duty with commitment to increase the revenue drive of the federal government despite dwindling revenue. Benny Adams completes the report. The slamming of Gavel by Senate President Ahmed Lawan signals the commencement of a new era in Nigeria's top revenue collecting agency, the FIRS. Barely 12 hours after that confirmation, Mohamed Nami hits the ground running with an unscheduled visit to office. While waiting to be received by the acting chairman, Biodun Aino, members of staff in droves came to catch a glimpse of the new bus, with the bold ones reaching for a handshake. Soon after he is received, Nami rolled out his plans for the revenue base of the country. I'm going to own FRS. 
in such a way that the core responsibility of the staff that has been contracted out will be immediately addressed. I pledge loyalty of all my colleagues, and I believe I'm speaking for them, and their commitment to supporting you to achieve the lofty objective of the service. Then a closed door session with directors and heads of department of the service to discuss modalities of how to chart the new course. NAMI is coming at a time the revenue base of the country has at November fell by 104.161 billion naira short of the previous month. Mohamed NAMI is a trained tax, accounting and management professional with highly rated decades of experience. NAMI has with him a 13-member board to pilot the affairs of the FIRS in the next four years. Benny Adams, NTA News. Vakabi State Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu has presented a sum of 138 billion naira as budget estimate for the year 2020 to the State House of Assembly for consideration. Governor Bagudu pledged to continue investing and diversifying the state economy for speedy development. Correspondent Usman Shehu Abdullahi reports. The 2020 KB State Appropriation Bill was tagged the budget for continuity and continuous reform. Governor Bokara Atiku Bagudu, who presented the sum of 138.1 billion naira as the state's 2020 budget, said the budget was designed to improve the internally generated revenue and social economic development of the state. Governor Bagudu equally explained that the sum of 86.7 billion naira was allocated to capital expenditure, while 51.4 billion naira will go for current state expenditure, that is 3 and 37 percent respectively. We are quite, quite happy with the development drive. The best activity towards KB is increasing, and this is just with the support of all of you. And I still urge all of us in this hall to be ambassadors of the state in marketing our state so that our entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs from around the world, around Nigeria, can come and put their money in Kenya. While reviewing the 2019 budget, Governor Atiku Bagudu said, despite challenges, the state government has recorded achievement in areas like agriculture, healthcare, education, and socio-economic development, among others. The governor disclosed that the 2020 budget will focus on infrastructure, education, healthcare, service delivery, and improve social welfare of the people. In Burning Kebi, Usman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. Strengthening institutions to implement government policies is one of the ways to grow the economy of West Africa, says a United Nations envoy, Paul Akinwumi. This was at a joint workshop on fostering productive capacities, structural economic transformation and export diversification in weak West African economies holding in Abuja. Over now to Benny Adams. The issues bedeviling African economies are not new. They are biting even harder at the sub-regional level. Inclusive and sustainable growth, commodity-driven exports, policies and strategies implementation, technological transfers, and domestic resources management are some of the bridges to cross. This round table is, however, advancing more robust concept to tackle them. The commodity-driven model has reached its limits and has failed to deliver its promises. And this calls for urgent action to move away from quantity-centered and commodity-driven approaches towards policies and strategies focused on fostering productive capacities and structural transformation. Nigeria, West Africa's economic giant, is showing positive in many indices, with Ghana and Guinea not too far behind. Same, however, cannot be said of others. The region requires clear industrial strategies, wide-ranging policy and institutional reforms, and conducive political economy environment to build productive capacities and shift away from low productive sectors to high productive sectors, as well as diversify exports. 
This informed the signing of an MOU between the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development and Center for Study of Economies of Africa aimed at research and capacity building across West Africa to enhance domestic competitiveness in production, which will subsequently translate increased volume of trade and exports. Benny Adams, NTA News. And it's time to join Hingino in our latest network center for top stories from that zone. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Hawa, and a warm welcome to Lagos. As a way of bridging the ever-existing communication gap between government and the people, the need for effective and efficient communication framework must be put in place to make the govern feel essential belonging in the running of business of governance. This was the focus of speakers at the policy round table organized by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Policy Development and Analysis in Lagos, Twinde Saiki reports. Over the years, there has always been this belief that most government policies and programs are not always well communicated to people. This in other words, some to be people and all the policies for communication framework. It is against this battle that the Office of Senior Special Assistant to the President on Policy Development and Analysis decided to find a way of bridging the communication gap in governance. A lot of stuff I identify some gaps which of course board on the strategy in which government communicate to people. And that's why we have to sit down and address those issues, look at these issues and then advise the government. The founding dean, School of Media and Communication, Pan Atlantic University Lagos noted that engagement in communication must be motivational and not distorted, adding that a leader must communicate frequently with the people. But the role of communication systems, you don't think of them in isolation from the social and political environment in which they exist, because they are functional within that kind of, of process. Other discussants say governance and engagement must be responsive to connect minds of citizens with the government, thereby making them to understand their needs and how to deliver it. The policy roundtable is the second in the series of engagements with stakeholders on how to assist government in bridging the gaps of communication in Nigeria. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Talking judiciary now. As part of measures to ensure speedy dispensation of justice and avoidance of unnecessary adjournment that often leads to prolonged cases in court, a document containing data that will enhance transparency and accountability in the judiciary has been made public for a more effective judicial system. Amakao has the details. The defense takes 150 days at the High Court and 39 days at the Magistrate. The document delved into activities in 25 courts, which comprises of four high courts and 21 magistrate courts in Lagos State between March 2018 till 2019. It will make each and every sector of the judiciary, the judiciary, the judicial officers, and even the lawyers to know where they need to improve on. Findings of the four shows that with close monitoring of criminal cases on anti corruption, delay in signing of corruption cases filed to judges take an average of 67 days while criminal cases take 70 days which is contrary to section 252 subsection 2 of the administration of criminal justice law of Lagos State which stipulates 15 days of each filing. The chief judge of Lagos State says the state judiciary remains resolute in nipping corruption in the bud. And report this official so that it can be brought Statistics from the research conducted also indicate that the Nigerian police force prosecutes the highest number of criminal cases in Lagos State, put at 44%. Where the investigators at the police station will have all the technology, all the equipment they need to really investigate. Recommendations were made by stakeholders, including effective case management systems, plea bargain, among others. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. Now to security. The Nigerian Navy has again reiterated its commitment to ensuring the safety of Nigerian maritime domain. The flag of the commanding Naval Training Command, Rear Admiral Stanford 
Enoch. We treated this while reading out the successes recorded by the Nigerian Navy in recent times. Annie Daniels reports. The government has declared Wednesday the 25th and Thursday the 26th December 2019 as well as Wednesday the 1st of January 2020 as public holidays to mark the Christmas Boxing Day and the New Year celebrations. In a statement, the Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregbe Shola, who made a declaration on behalf of the federal government, felicitates Christians and all Nigerians on this year's Christmas and New Year celebrations. He enjoins all Christians to live within the virtues and teachings of Jesus Christ, which hinge on compassion, peace, righteousness, and love for one another. The minister expresses confidence that 2020 will be a breakthrough year for all Nigerians. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has set aside its decision to hear the application to review the bail conditions of Abdurashid Mena, a former chairman of the defunct pension reform tax team who is standing trial on the 12th count charge bordering on fraud and money laundering. The decision was as a result of objection raised by the prosecution counsel, Mohammed Abubakar, who informed the court that the defense counsel served him for the affidavit and he will equally need time to file a further affidavit. He argued that failure to grant him time to reply will amount to denying the prosecution its rights to fair hearing. The defense counsel argued that the prosecution has already filed a counter affidavit in the matter. As such, he attempt to delay delivering ruling on the matter. Justice Okon Abang cited the case between Denny Mari versus Ozombachi, in which the Court of Appeal ruled that parties can file further counter affidavit. In a criminal matter, the Federal High Court cannot overrule the decision of a higher court. He, however, joined the case to the 13th of January 2020. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the recomposition and inauguration of the board of the Niger Delta Commission, NDDC, after a forensic audit of the organization. In a statement by the Special Advisor, to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, the president has also directed that the interim management team of the NDDC be in place till the forensic is completed and that the supervision of the commission remain under the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. Moving on, Nigerian mining engineers and geoscientists are to be fully engaged by the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development in actualizing the objectives of the mining roadmap, Minister of Mines and Steel Development Olami Lekon Adegbita said this at a ceremony which a ceremony with Joe Scientist in Abuja. President, this administration is trying to use this sector to diversify the economy, to create wealth, create jobs for our people. I would like the professional in this industry to contribute their quota so that we can take mining uh, to its proper place in the economy of Nigeria. To agriculture now, the recent release of new variety of cow pig known popularly as Benz has been generating concerns and comments among farmers and consumers. Though the high breed seed is drought and insect resistant with high yield, the process of its discovery is generating the concerns. Over to Musa Baba Aliyu for more. So, there is a study that indicates that most Nigerians are looking for a way to reduce their consumption of meat. But the concern is what will replace the missing protein in their diet. Nutritionists have, however, identified beans as the perfect food to replace meat. I love beans. Beans is good for human consumption. Beans is protein. And I see those insects inside. I would not even have the appetite to eat beans. So I'll just prefer eating any other food. And also the storage capacity, storage plant with chemical, harmful chemical to the system. So there are also another uh, part that I want you to be careful about. 
weevils and insect infestation in beans is not just a concern to consumers alone, but a major challenge to farmers and agronomists. Kasumu, a beans farmer in Gwagwalada area of Abuja, is worried over the amount of money he spends on insecticides he uses on his farm to control the Maruka pod borap pest. <laughs> Professor Ibrahim Ishaku is the plant genetic engineer from Ahmadu Bello in this area. With the support of other scientists drawn from the National Biotechnology Development Agency, carried out a research and developed a new variety of beans that is not only insect resistant but has high yields. This research was carried out in the laboratory. Its success was tested. The stability of the approach was confirmed. I participated in the team and decided that this is a tool with which we can possibly develop cowpea varieties that will protect themselves against Maruka. The new variety is genetically modified, is said to be a good and also profitable. However, there are concerns from some quarters that it may have side effects. Which I know in terms of safety, of course, it's very, very safe because all safety assessments have been done. This research has been on for like 11 years. For now, Nigeria remains the world's biggest producer of beans with an average of 3.1 million tons annually. This accounts for more than 58% of the world's total output of 5.4 million tons. Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. And we now join Musa in our Sokoto Network Center for reports on Nationwide. It's good to see you, Musa. And welcome to Sokoto. The three inmates of Sokoto Custodial Center gain freedom courtesy of Maria Miro Temple Legacy Initiative. Mohammed Nasser has the details. Lenera was expended by the Maria Mero Amini Tambo Legacy Initiative to secure the release of the 33 inmates who are mostly serving jail terms of debt related cases. The initiative focuses attention on the fight against gender violence, domestic violence, and human rights violation. We come here, talk to you as our brothers, our children, that all shall be well. Amend your ways. We will help where we can and we will try and push and solicit for those who are deserving of amnesty and those who have been unfairly detained. We will push for them to be released. On its part, the Sokoto Correctional Service commended the foundation to register and urge other individuals in the state to emulate it. They should be good citizens. They should try to emulate the, the, the good guy. Each of the beneficiaries was given 10,000 naira as transport pay to their respective destinations. Assorted drinks were distributed to the inmates still serving various jail terms in the custodial center in order to put smile on their faces. Some of the beneficiaries expressed their happiness and prayed to Allah to reward the foundation in Sokoto, Muhammad Nas, and T News. 3,175 households are to take home 10,000 naira as part of federal government's conditional cash transfer program. Sheikh Mohammed Dati reports that the flag of ceremony of the cash disbursement took place in the local government area of Sakwato State. These are the first set of beneficiaries to enjoy the first payment cycle of national conditional cash transfer program in Sakwato State, a program which is also known as Household Uplift Program started in 2015 in 14 states. This is the continuation of the program. But this will go a long way in helping the vulnerable households. Because if you give a poor woman who said, what's that, you could know, five thousand naira every month. You have done very good for her. Because she, she will do, I mean, if she uses the money judiciously. The program is aimed at providing access to cash transfer for poor and vulnerable households under an expanded national social safety net system, thereby increasing and improving households' consumption and human capital development. The thing is that in all the local governments, we have about 96 local governments, and simultaneous across the local governments. 
the communities identified the poorest of the poor to be supported with 5,000 monthly to enhance their living standard. So far, more than 20 states are benefiting from the program. Sokoto Shum Muhammad Dekti, NTA News. Well, that was our contribution from Sokoto. How is back to you? Many thanks, Musa. And the need for an inclusive budget that will facilitate the dictates of the national policy and reproductive health rights of people with disability has been advocated. Elizabeth Mori reports that this was part of recommendations at a media briefing on inclusive budgets in Abuja by a group of concerned associations. She Uwadia, is deaf, but not dumb. She shares her experience with me at a hospital. When I met the nurse, I asked, I told her my problem. She was, she was not, when she was speaking to me, I was not hearing her. I requested to for repeat or writing down what she was saying. She became angry and asked me to leave her office. Oche is not the only disabled person to have had such encounter with medical practitioners. This prompted the briefing to advocate for an inclusive budget to meet the health needs of persons with disability. We're calling on all the ministries of health, finance, budgeting, and planning, and you know the humanitarian service, disaster management, social development, all of these ministries to be deliberate in their effort to ensure inclusive budgeting. And you know, they need for that to be taken into account, you know, to on the need for um, the sexual and reproductive health rights of women and girls with disabilities to cover all forms of disabilities. A research by the World Health Organization on Persons with Disability indicates that 15% of the world's population live with disability. In Nigeria, this figure sums up to over 30 million persons. In January 2019, President Muhammad Buhari signed into law the Discrimination Against Persons with Disability Prohibition Act 2018 to provide social inclusion and end discrimination. Information in the hospital needs to come in written forms for especially those who cannot um, speak or you know those who cannot hear at least so they can read the instructions in the hospital and get what information the hospital is passing or even in blue ballots Nigeria is capable of having hospital um, instructions written in braille for those people who are blind you know to access so a lot of those facilities need to be put in place the groups I am soliciting the support of the government to implement in their demands as physically challenged women and girls are mostly denied basic health care services. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. And Chine in Enugu is next on our lineup. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Hawa, and welcome to Enugu. In an effort to ensure the decongestion of correctional centers, stakeholders involved in the administration of criminal justice have been charged to ensure speedy and upright justice delivery. The facilitator Enugu State Justice Reform Team, Justice Justina Ofia, made the charge at a seminar held at the Enugu State High Court. Chidi Okorafo captured the moments. The theme of the seminar was justification for remand proceedings in the administration of criminal justice of Enugu State. The facilitator, Enugu State Justice Reform Team, disclosed that the program seeks to partner relevant authorities towards ensuring justice delivery without difficulty in accordance with the provision of the law. She said the forum is aimed at preferring ways of achieving speedy dispensation of justice. So what we are trying to do is to find a way of implementing those provisions in order to remove this observed Keynote speaker, Justice Peter Obiora, who spoke on relevance or otherwise of the remand proceedings under the administration of criminal justice in any state, said that the quality of justice depends more on the quality of men who administer the law than the content of the law they administer. Justice Obiora urged stakeholders in the administration of criminal justice not only in Enugu state but the entire country to carry out their constitutional duties without fear or favor. It's all about the proceedings through which a person is brought from the police in respect of serious offenses and then the person is put in custody pending the time the trial will commence. 
The event featured interactive sections by participants and was attended by stakeholders involved in the administration of criminal justice, including officials of the Nigerian Correctional Service. In Enugu, Chidi Okrafo, NTN News. Meanwhile, 92 inmates regained freedom from correctional services centers in Enugu State as the state chief judge, Priscilla Emehelu, embarked on the 2019 jail delivery exercise. Emehelu described the exercise as a statutory responsibility of the judiciary. Chika Ugu reports. Exercise kicked off at the Enugu Correctional Service Center, where 70 inmates who have been incarcerated for a period of time exceeding the maximum incarceration period for the alleged offense were discharged. Some unconditionally, while others were released on bail. Enugu State Chief Judge Priscilla Emehelu pointed out that the high rate of congestion has exposed inmates to endemic disease, jail breaks, and lack of reforms. Hence, the need to decongest the correctional service centers. Six inmates of Enugu Procedural Center convicted for various offenses with optional fine had their fines paid by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Enugu State. While eight inmates who have not been going to court for five years and opposed. The controller of the Enugu State Correctional Service Centers, Chinedu Emelwe, encouraged the judges to ensure that deserving inmates are set free. Some of the inmates that got outright discharged, including a 12-year-old girl, expressed their joy. The chief judge and her team concluded the visit at the Super Custodian Center where 14 inmates were discharged unconditionally and eight granted bail in Enugu, Chika Ugu, NTA News. The 82 Division of the Nigerian Army Enugu has taken its free medical outreach to a home of our community in the local government area of Enugu State. The General Office Commanding Major General Lassisi Adeboe said the program is aimed at winning the hearts and minds of the people. Chidi Mamadu reports. At the outreach, the military medical team had various departments like the eye clinic, physiotherapy, mobile dental clinic, laboratory, and pharmacy, where the people of the community were cared for. The General Officer Commanding 82 Division, Major General Lassisi Adeboye, went around the various units where the people were attended to. He also said that they will continue to carry out their duties within the ambits of its responsibilities. We are Army, under the able leadership of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tokuri Yusuf Baratai, regularly engaged in civil military cooperation activities aimed at winning the arts and minds of the host communities. The traditional rely of a home or bar community, Igwe Evaristus or Na, thanked GO and the division's hospital staff for bringing free health care to their doorsteps. Before now, I think when I see soldiers, I, I, I will just see them as people carrying guns and uh, wearing camouflage. But today, they have been in a different way. They don't protect us alone. They still seek our medical treatment. Some members of the community were surprised and glad that such gesture came from the Nigerian army. I'm very, very happy. The thing is going well. I've received drugs freely. This is my first time seeing the military coming for medical services. In Enugu, Chidima Madu, NT News. And that's our contribution from Enugu. Nationwide continues with Hawa in Abuja after this commercial break. Please stay with us. It's nationwide. Thanks for staying. Nigeria has launched her Future of Work report in preparation for the implementation of the roadmap designed to address the impact of globalization, climate change, and technology arising from the world of work. The launch was in response to the call for all member states of the International Labour Organization to support the Global Dialogue on the Future of Work initiative. Recommendations contained in the report of the Global Commission, the declaration puts forward human, a human-centered approach to the future of work 
with a focus on three key pillars. Increasing investment in people's capabilities, increasing investments in the institutions of work, and increasing investment in decent and sustainable work. We are placing more priority on the informal sector because of its huge potential in providing employment for millions of Nigerians as we look into the future with great hope and optimism. The program is expected to create decent jobs and employment opportunities for all Nigerians, especially the youth and women. And still on development issues, it's a journey of fulfillment of promise to the United Nations as Nigeria sets up an implementation committee to facilitate the planting of 25 million trees to mitigate climate change. Mie Ogidi gives us the modalities to achieve this. Nigeria is stepping up to what science is telling her about the environment. So, a promise was made at the 74th UN General Assembly meeting to plant 25 million trees annually as mitigation effort carbon sink. Achieving planting of 25 million trees is something that we can do because we have the capacity. Daring spirit for forest recovery in a country where the forest space is less than 6% as against the 25% UN benchmark. Going forward, these people from relevant public and private agencies with filling on the environment implement the actualization of the planting of 25 million trees with a time frame. 25 million trees within the year 2020. As I speak to you, we have collected almost 20 million seeds that we use for this process. Afforestation without a proper check on deforestation equals to mobbing the floor while the tap is still on. Take the centralization, the advocacy, but at the same time also urging on government to do the needful in uh, taking to the people cheaper sources of energy. Beyond carbon sink, it's also an ecological restoration process, especially on erosion prone areas. Mie Ogidi, Antinus. Participation of Nigerians in governance is set to witness a tremendous improvement. This is because the Sustainable Development Goals is now part of the primary school's curriculum in Nigeria. Ike Chuku Ndukwe reports. Beliki Salaudin and Jedolise are apostles of the Sustainable Development Goals in Kwara and Nasrawa State, respectively. We go out for sanitizations and sanitations, educating people on why it is important for them to do this particular thing. To Part of the programs we do is to go schools to schools, teach girls about their rights. They are in the FCT to witness the official introduction of families, the one for the implementation of the SDGs, to further ensure participation of all Nigerians in the nearest future. The Federal Ministry of Education has already added the SDG in the primary school curriculum to inject a learning experience that is sustainable. It offers children around the world the opportunity of being exposed to the newly adopted SDGs in a lively and engaging manner. Use the education of the SDGs to get everybody aware of their duties and roles in building the nation that we want. As much as SDGs are, is about people, about all of us, to create a world that is sustainable, that is resilient, that will guarantee our future, then all of us must be part of the development. From the SDG office, this target is to get all families in Nigeria joined in the implementation process to promote good health, sanitation, quality education, and zero hunger, among others through the instrumentality of the world largest lessons. In Abuja, Ike Chukundukwe, NTN News. And still on catching them young, the public presentation of a poetry collection titled From the Deep by a teenager, Marachi Eze, has again awakened the consciousness on the need for parents and caregivers to pay adequate attention to the responsibilities of child upbringing to secure a future for the younger generation. Kenneth Nanim has that. Every piece of literature is a work of art 
just as the creator of these works of art adorned at the walls of this hall represented his or her imaginative feelings in drawings and paintings. So has the 16-year-old Amarachese put in words her overflowing emotions in a 32-page poetry collection with the title From the Deep. What lessons are there to learn from the effort of this young mind? You must limit the amount of time your children spend watching television. Please take them to bookshops so that they can pick books and read. We should not disregard a girl child and we should um, send her to school, train her very well, give her the best of education. I'm very impressed with the book. Um, I'm very impressed with the tone of the, of the poems itself. It's very deep, like the actual title says. She started from the cradle, you know, and I've, I've encouraged her. She's been writing, but I never took it serious. But this time around, I, says, I just realized it's a passion. The young girl is reflecting the thoughts of, of, the youngsters, of youngsters in this uh, country. It will make the adults, the, you know, reflect on, you know, what's going on. I also write, so... For the author, this medley edition is just the tip of the iceberg of the series of the publications in her stock. Writing will be my career. I want to be a lawyer. I get my inspiration from my surroundings. For the likes of Ajifa and other peers, this feat achieved by the young poet Amrachese has thrown a challenge to them all. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. And the Nigerian television authorities merge in passion, des dedication and dexterity to confront a future where its services will be powered mostly by technology. At its annual news management conference in Abuja, assistant directors and managers nationwide received new marching orders on operationalization. Over now to Abubakar Usman Akwanga for details. Florence Oji has a practical experience of television industry that traversed the three arms of reportoria, editoria, and current affairs for more than three decades and still seeking for improved performance. This explains why she joins other colleagues across the country at the NTA annual news conference to review progress achieved in 2019 and identify setbacks with firm commitment to surmounting them. We are all expected to take NTA to level or to that level that it is aspiring to be. If we're, if we're saying 40 years in broadcasting, then we should stay on the path and be the leader, let others follow. It will enhance our performance, particularly in the area of reportage. Um, 2019 elections coverage and other accurate task the organization carried out during the period underscored the importance attached to the conference. We are trying to align to the digitization process. So we expect to see NTA expanding its horizon. Of course, we still have the reach. So we are trying to widen the scope in terms of uh, digital uh, space. Satisfied with the height at the end, NTA management resonated paradigm shift as the theme of the annual conference with concerns in expanding the ICT speed in line with global trend of creativity and excellence in broadcasting. That this achievement that we have been able to make uh, so far uh, also build upon it, build the confidence and uh, also make sure that we move this uh, authority to the next level. The resolution of Florence Orji and others here is to build an elaborate platform through ICT driven systems to improve capacity and add value to governance in Nigeria and beyond. The review conference is an annual practice by NTA management to improve on critical areas of its mandate and continually develop a quality template for past previous performance as well as driving in its vision as the largest TV network in Africa. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Awanga, NTA News. NTA is determined to maintain the central seat. Sports now, Super Eagles on move the latest FIFA ranking. Details and more on sports updates with Kenneth Emagodiki.